Okay. Go ahead, Sydney. Yeah, you want me to start? Well, good afternoon, yeah. everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'm Sydney Katz, and I'm the Montgomery County Council Member for the Third District. Um, I'm the chair of the Public Safety Committee and serve on the Government Operations Committee as well. And I am delighted that you're joining us for on, on this Zoom for our 19th, our 19th business briefing. Uh, the purpose of these briefings is to help local businesses and nonprofits navigate through our new economic reality. I'm very happy to have two outstanding Montgomery County leaders with us today. Um, Anthony Featherstone, the Executive Director of WorkSource Montgomery, and Brad Stewart, the Senior Vice President of Business Development for Montgomery County Economic Development Corporation, also known as MCEDC, because in government you have to use initials. I mean, that's just what part of what we do. Our guests are going to introduce themselves with brief remarks, and then we're going to take questions from our Zoom audience. You may send your questions, please, to the chat box on the right of your screen. Before we start, I'd like to thank Lori Edberg from my office for all of her hard work setting up these briefings, and Susan Kennedy, who will be moderating this, the, this briefing, and she's moderated the other 18 as well, and she does a fabulous job, and I have a feeling number 19 is going to be fabulous as, uh, uh, as well. And with that, Susan, please let's begin. Thank you so much. Very, very glad and honored to be here in the presence of our two guests today. I think they will both provide us with quite a bit of a good information on what's happening here in Montgomery County. Um, Mr. Stewart, I'm going to start. You've been at MCEDC for, you said, just a little over a year. We were speaking before the broadcast began. And I read that you are one of the top five people to know in the, the biotech se sector for 2021. Tell us what you got that recognition and a little bit about yourself at the EDC. Sure. So uh, thank you very much. And I'll tell you a little bit of, about myself. And uh, as I do that, thank all of you for letting me join you here. So I've lived in Maryland for 24 years now. All of those years as a citizen, having uh, Council Member Katz as my leader. I live in the city of Gaithersburg, and I'm very thankful for his service and continued service. And uh, the joy of getting to live in in the city. So, I work. In, I spent my career in the life sciences industry on the commercial side of it, and over the years have become increasingly involved in advocating for the life sciences industry in the state of Maryland, and obviously here in Montgomery County. Uh, my experience is a little different from many in this sector of biotechnology, in that it's primarily been running commercial stage life sciences companies, where we've traditionally been a little earlier stage here. Uh, in doing that, over the last six years, I've also been the chair of the Maryland Life Sciences Organization, which is the state affiliate for BIO, the International Biotech Organization, and been involved a lot with um, helping uh, to grow the industry here. When I came to MCADC about a, a little over a year ago now, it really was to help from the business development perspective to say, how can we help grow all of the key industries here in Montgomery County? Uh, to help bring in new businesses, new opportunities, new jobs, high paying opportunities into Montgomery County uh, from a strategic and executional view. And then we had a pandemic. <laughs> and in that we kept our eyes focused on what our original objective was. You've seen some tremendous growth in the life sciences sector, obviously in Montgomery County in the past year, probably not probably definitely unprecedented. But in that also we've worked very hard to help support all of the other industries that we have here. Um, I've administered our restaurant relief program and uh, my team and the people I work with. We have a three hour program uh, to help with retail. We've done work in teleworking programs. So we've tried to pitch in and contribute every place we were capable of doing. And much of that has been uh, thankfully at the request of uh, council member Katz and the rest of the county council uh, to ask us to do that and allow us to do it. So thank you for that. And I'll turn it over to Anthony. Thank you so much. And Anthony, um, you are fairly new to the scene, only two months on the job. Tell us a little bit about your history before you came to WorkSource and, and as moving forward this next year. Uh, sure, sure, Susan. And, and first, um, thank you, Council Member Katz, for, for inviting me to this session today. I'm really looking forward to the conversation. Uh, but I, I've been in WorkSource development about 15 years. <clears throat> I have uh, worked in 
uh, several different states up and down the eastern seaboard with uh, several different uh, programs that serve various populations. I got into workforce and stayed in the workforce uh, because I, I think it's no better way to um, to affect a, a person's life or, or the, the, the lives of those around them, but then through economic empowerment, uh, which involves training and long-term labor market attachment through gainful employment. Um, I recently joined WorkSource Montgomery about two months ago. Uh, really excited about the opportunity. Um, during the pandemic, we're, we're ready to, to roll our sleeves up uh, and assist our, our business community and our residents get, get back to work uh, and, and travel along their, their career pathway. So uh, thank you again for, for inviting me, and I'm looking forward to the conversation. Well, thank you. And let me just say, uh, that, that we are most appreciative that that and and very very lucky that both of you were in Montgomery County working for Montgomery County uh, and to to uh, you know it, it is an unprecedented prompt uh, situation but we're going to have an unprecedented situation for quite some time I mean even when we finally um, get COVID behind us. And hopefully that'll be sooner rather than later. I mentioned before we came on, I got my second shot today. And so, uh, we're, we're getting there, but, uh, it, it's, this is not a spigot that, that the moment that, that, uh, people, uh, get their shots and start to feel a little bit more comfortable, business is not going to come back the way business was prior. And we need to hire people. We need to, to get that better life and we need to make certain that, that companies Want to be here and stay here, and and uh, and that we're all partners in in this uh, this entire situation. So, thank you very very much for all that you're doing, and will continue continue to do. Susan, do we have any any questions? We do have some questions from the audience, and I also have some questions. But I'll ask this first question from audience member Green Aaron. She wants to know his work. You're you're breaking up a little bit. You know, I'm going to turn my video off and let's see if that helps. Does okay. Workforce uh, have an, an initiative to assist job seekers 55 and plus? Age has become an issue finding jobs during this stressful time. Um, Anthony, do you do you guys have anything in place for, for the seniors? Yes, we do. We do have an older workers uh, program. We partner with our, our friends over at the Jewish Council on, on Aging. Um, we have a, a federally funded program we, where we are um, our older workers with uh, the, the upskilling that they need based on the career paths that they want to uh, to go into. Uh, and that's not the only program that's available. Our general services are, are also um, available to our, our older workers as well. So uh, whether our partnership with the Jewish Council on Aging is the right program, uh, for, for those um, individuals or if they want to access some of our general services, or uh, our federal programs that provide other, other levels of, of trainings, um, those services are, are available. Uh, it all starts with the conversation. So uh, I encourage everybody to visit our, our website at uh, WorksourceMontgomery.com. Um, we, our physical doors are closed, but our, our virtual doors are, are wide open. So uh, if you contact us on the number uh, listed on our website, someone will, will contact you back. Uh, very, very quickly to, to make sure that you get to the, the people and the resources that you need. And of course, we all realize that someone over 55 is not old. I mean, I'm just, I would just like to casually mention that as someone over 55, please. <laughs> I have a question um, following up on that, Anthony. What, what does, what's happening with companies right now in Montgomery County? Are, are they hiring? Um, and what does our unemployment level look like? So companies are, are hiring and, um, the, the, the requirements are, are, are changing a bit because we're in a, in a virtual uh, status right now. So there is a, a, a huge need for uh, a higher level of, of technical uh, competency. Um, and that's why, you know, one of the things that we're focusing on right now is to uh, work with individuals who may want to, uh, you know, do a crosswalk from uh, an industry that may have been affected, like the hospitality industry, and get into other uh, occupations or, or industries. So we, we have a lot of uh, great programs going on that start with the foundation uh, of, of technical knowledge that you'll need that, that are bridged or stacked with other uh, IT credentials to get into uh, to, to various fields. 
Um, I think our last report uh, was that our unemployment rate was about 5.88%. I think it rose a percentage point um, from the uh, from the prior month. Uh, but we're, we're seeing, uh, you know, I believe we've stabilized and we've seen a lot of improvements since the pandemic started. One, one factor I always like to speak about is the, our labor force. Um, and our labor force is uh, comprised of folks who are employed and, and unemployed looking for work. And we've lost a lot of workers in our labor force since the pandemic started uh, to the tune of 50,000 plus. And these are individuals that, that may just be discouraged. They don't think a job is out there for them. So one of our, our primary targets now and in the future is going to be to make sure that, that we market our, our services throughout the county so folks know who we are and how to get to us seamlessly um, uh, to, to individuals who may be discouraged or wouldn't necessarily walk through our, our physical or, or virtual doors. And if I can add, Susan, a little bit to what Anthony said. Please. We're, we're very fortunate in some ways here in Montgomery County. Uh, as he said, our unemployment rate now is about 5.8%. We have the lowest unemployment rate in this region, in the whole DMV region. So. Montgomery County has, although been hit significantly by the pandemic, it's been hit less severely uh, than those around us. But that being said, it's also hit disproportionately uh, a lot of our communities. So you see a, a lot higher unemployment rate in uh, communities of color and other minority groups. And so I think that's a big area we need to focus moving forward. And those are, those are people who've been disproportionately affected because they may work in um, hospitality, retail, other industries that have been restaurants have been severely affected. So hopefully as uh, people get vaccinated and the economy is able to open back up, those jobs will quickly start to come back. Uh, Anthony's group, along with MCDC and USG, uh, we've had positive success in places like biotechnology, uh, helped to sponsor a biotech boot camp that we did uh, six weeks ago, two months ago, to actually take displaced workers from those industries and provide them with training, uh, retraining to allow them to be qualified and find jobs in the biotech industry. So I think it's that sort of creative thinking that we need to continue to use as we hopefully are starting to see the other side of this pandemic. And, and of course, we- Will there be more of those camps? Pardon me, Sydney, go right ahead. Hey, that's okay, go ahead, please. Anthony, I'm, to... I'm sorry. Sydney, if there will be, if there will be additional bio boot camps, is that something that's that's in the future, Brad? So I think we we have plans to do another one. Uh, the first thing we want to do is uh, start to get feedback from the employers and and these people that find jobs to determine, make sure the curriculum is right and we're providing the right tools. Uh, I know Anthony has talked before about potentially doing that same sort of thing in other fields. Technology would be another one that's uh, an obvious one in this area where there's a, an ever-increasing demand for skill sets. Well, and of course, we, uh, as, as, and they're so very pleased that the uh, University of Maryland at Shady Grove is, is here, but yeah. we certainly always have to mention our good friends from Montgomery College as well, uh, one of the most premier, literally, premier uh, community colleges in, in the United States. Uh, yeah. And so... Uh, and I know that they were a part of the of the boot camp and, and will continue to be. And that's the other thing is, you know, as, as horrible, and we can underline the word horrible, as horrible as the COVID uh, crisis has, has been, in some ways it does have people uh, become educated in a different way and, and in some cases get a much better job because of that additional, that additional training. So, you know, because... We have the resources in Montgomery County. Everyone should please utilize them. Yeah, Council Member Katz, I'm glad you said that. Montgomery College is an incredible partner of ours, along with USG. Um, the entire team in, in Germantown is where their biotech training program yeah. is. Collins Jones runs it. And they, in normal times, they do a remarkable job of helping to train the workforce here in this county and state in life sciences in this pandemic times, it's so far beyond remarkable that it's, um, they're just a spectacular team of people. And, it, and it's something that we almost take for granted. I mean, as I said, I, today, that's where I was in Germantown campus for this, this COVID shot. And you have the hospital right there. You had, of course, you know, the, the, the uh, for the COVID shot, you had the state of Maryland involved, you had Montgomery County involved. You have all of these different agencies come together, literally, to save people's lives. I mean, they did it before this too, but but certainly during this time. And and it's you know it it, it runs 
it runs smoothly and people expect it just to run smoothly. It takes a lot of people to, to have that uh, run as smoothly as it does. Anthony, I have a question. If you could elaborate a little bit more about how you connect your resources to, to help folks get jobs. Extend a little bit further for us if you could. Sure. So everything um, with us starts with an assessment, whether we're we're working with our business community or working with our, our job seekers. So we like to, to go through an in-depth assessment with, with either, um, I guess, side of our, our house when it comes to our services to see what the specific needs are. Uh, we don't uh, approach things from a blanket or, or general standpoint. We want to really get to know our job seekers, who they are, what they've done what their skills and areas of opportunities are so that we can build an actionable plan for them moving forward. And, and once we've done that and built that plan, then we start to connect the dots. Uh, if um, the plan includes training, uh, we just uh, mentioned Montgomery College, uh, we, we have a, who's a world-class um, uh, training uh, organization. Uh, they offer a, a lot of different programs and a lot of different uh, industries that are approved uh, through the Maryland Department of Labor. So we work with uh, with them and other partners who are also uh, approved to to bridge the the, the training um, uh, gap. And and we have some resources and supports uh, internally uh, to support folks along the way as they go through training. Uh, but we can, we don't offer it all, and we can't offer it all. So we work with a lot of our community based organizations. Uh, who provide ancillary support so that uh, our customers can focus on training while they're in training. Um, and then on the back end, uh, we like to uh, have a robust uh, set of employer partners who are uh, there to take advantage of our subsidized employment resources that will help their bottom line in, in, in hiring uh, our customers so that uh, in an ideal situation, when someone finishes training, they can go into a paid work experience or internship opportunity or directly into uh, unsubsidized employment. So we like to bring all of our partners throughout the county together um, when it makes sense for the needs of our, our customer that we're working with. That's and, and, and to the person who was the 55 years or older person who, who, uh, who wrote in, um, what would be the steps for that person to take in order to to find to help find employment for for them for them? So I would I would first recommend to uh, to give us a call and let's let's have a, a conversation about exactly what they're looking to do and what their their skill sets are. Um, are they unemployed right now? Underemployed um, or, or whatever the the case may be, so that we can chart that that path. I think. Uh, whenever it comes to uh, to working with any any uh, job seeker or anybody that comes through our doors, it, it starts with that initial conversation uh, because we have a, a set of required partners that are, are required by law and a set of other partners who, who are voluntary. Um, and depending on the situation, we may be the best, um, I guess, uh, house for uh, uh, to be a primary service provider for that individual, or there may be a partner agency that, that we want to refer to um, and do an integrated service delivery model. So I always say it starts with a, a conversation. Um, so just, just give us a call. Um, and we'll have our folks um, either pick up the phone or call you back really, really quickly uh, so that we can start start that plan. And so they would go online and and uh, set up a, 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 a meeting or, or actually just literally call you on the phone? They could fill out a form and set up a meeting, or if they're they're more comfortable with just calling us, we have folks on standby to take those calls as well. So it just uh, it it really just depends on what what their preference is. Very good, Brad. I, question for you: um, We had James Chung on our show several weeks back, and one of the things that he mentioned was that Montgomery County needs to work on branding itself. And, and his suggestion was that we needed to brand ourselves as the immunology capital of the world. Talk a little bit about that that idea and, and how that fits into who we are today. I mean, we, we have so many companies in the life sciences, and I know there's a recent acquisition of another pharmaceutical company, and this seems to be a place where people are, are coming. It's, it's a hot spot. Um, is this something that we should be pushing a little bit more? What are your thoughts? Something we're already doing. And so that was one of the challenges that we faced when I first got here was we have so many capabilities here, but 
how does that coherently and cohesively get addressed? Uh, it's interesting when Councilmember Katz was talking before about the pandemic, even people who live here don't re really realize what an incredibly special place Montgomery County is. Um, not only do we have vaccines being developed here for COVID, uh, right down the street from my house, we have Novavax, who uh, hopefully their, their vaccine will be uh, approved in May or receive an authorization in May, potentially. That probably will be the largest vaccine in the world. Um, it'll be the vaccine that's probably used in most countries around the world and, and be one that's uh, financially available to countries like India and the continent of Africa and other places like that. So these are life changing things people are doing. Kyogen here uh, in Germantown has been expanding rapidly with massive improvements in uh, diagnostic testing for COVID and other new things. We had the first cell therapy for COVID developed right here in Gaithersburg. Uh, within 60 days of the time the pandemic started, that uh, company Cartesian Therapeutics had a, um, a cell therapy product in, in uh, trials. Uh, so we have we have vaccines being manufactured here, diagnostics, everything there is. It's just remarkable what is right here, not in our backyard, but literally in our yard. And so for us, prior to the pandemic, we had already started focusing on how do we let people know around the world? Because that's really uh, where I'm interested in talking to people is finding the people who do what we do very well here uh, and attracting them from, from other places around the world to be here with us. So we have probably one of the best areas in the entire world in cell and gene therapy. Um, we have some of the most exciting novel treatments for cancer that are coming to, to market or being developed right here uh, in Montgomery County. We have some of the most advanced biomanufacturing in the world here. And if anyone were ever to go into the GlaxoSmithKline manufacturing facility, uh, they just last year opened a, uh, they did $140 million um, remodeling of that facility. It's state of the world. Uh, and we also have uh, incredible expertise in vaccines. So when we sit down and look at that, it really is all based on immunology. I mean, these, the future of medicine and what we're doing here is really cutting edge is the ability to improve the patient's immune system or use it to help treat the patient themselves. And so we're very focused on communicating that message. Um, and it's one that we continue to get out there. You will see from us uh, a continual updating of new companies that are moving here they're updating here uh, we had a press release earlier this year there was eight billion dollars in funding that came to life sciences companies in montgomery county in 2020 a stunning amount of money uh, much of that due to uh, covid uh, product development uh, but we just announced last week that a new company is building a manufacturing facility here from massachusetts a company called tcr squared that'll be in rockville on the on medical center drive near shady grove and i hope that uh, I don't hope, but I fully uh, expect that I have other announcements that you'll hear coming up in the near future, not only in uh, life sciences, but in other areas. It's it's kind of reversing what people along that Montgomery County is not a good place to do business. We really are, and it's the place to be. And I think that's what we're trying to change that perception in the public that you know come here. We are ready. We have the we have the resources you need to do business here. The FDA, the importance of those government agencies and the relationships we have with them is just critical for those companies. Yeah, Susan, I think you hit it right on the on the head and um, I've done lots of webinars from 15 minutes to an hour discussing that fact I mean just in life sciences not just in other areas and uh, a lot of it is people don't know who we are where we are uh, I work on a global scale so um, it's not just someone who's in Frederick County I'm trying to tell about Montgomery County it's someone who's in Asia or Europe or somewhere else so part of that's just orienting, orienting them to where Montgomery County is, what we do. Um, I've said before, I spent 24 years here and um, a long time chairing the Maryland Life Sciences Organization. I was frustrated trying to articulate how, how do I let people know how critical uh, Montgomery County is in not just our countries, but the world's healthcare system. And I, there's a, in a presentation I do, there's actually a slide I put together um, to, that finally articulates this. So either in Montgomery County or within 25 miles of us, we have the largest payer for healthcare in the entire world, which is CMS, who has a budget of over a trillion dollars per year for healthcare, which is more than the GDP of most countries, much less their healthcare budgets. 
We have the largest researcher of healthcare in the entire world located here in Montgomery County, NIH. And we have the largest regulator of uh, healthcare products in the entire world, FDA here. So this is the epicenter of healthcare in the world. And we're, we want more people to know that and come join us here. Now you were saying that you reminded me of the story that I once was at NIST and um, Bill Phillips, Mr. Phillips was, who was a, who was a Nobel uh, prize winner who worked at NIST and we're going through there and with a group of people and, and, and uh, I mentioned to the person who was the, the guide for, for the group that was going through and I was going through with them as, a, as the mayor of Gaithersburg. And I said, are you going to mention that, Mr. Phillips is a Nobel Prize winner, and he, and he says, oh, yeah, you know, I probably should. Now, here, a Nobel Prize winner we're taking for granted, and this is uh, one of our neighbors, you know, so yeah. it always it always stuck in my mind, yeah. Yeah. Anthony, we're, we're running out of time, but I, I did want to ask you a question about, um, you know, what, as, as somebody who's looking at the business community um, as we're coming out of this pandemic, what do you think is the most um, important conversation that um, they should be having right now? I mean, what, what you know, as we recover. So I, I think there are, are, are definitely a lot of important conversations that, um, that need to be had right now. I think uh, the, there is the diversity, equity, and inclusion conversation as companies rebound and they look to, uh, you know, hopefully get back up to uh, pre-pandemic capacity and, and, and hopefully um, grow uh, to make sure that uh, the, the companies have solid DE and I uh, policies and practices in, in, in place um, to, uh, to 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 make sure that there, there's an even playing field for for workers to get back into uh, roles within their positions in their industry. So I think that's an important conversation across the board. Uh, I, I think, um, and uh, this is our, our our shameless workforce development plug. Um, get involved in your workforce system. Let us know uh, what we can do to assist your business. I don't know if that's the most important conversation, but uh, from a workforce development standpoint, businesses drive uh, our services and activities. So if there's something that a, a business needs, if there's a gap that, that we can fill, we, we want to know um, so that we can uh, hopefully try to, um, to provide a solution. So whether it's a uh, board membership or just having a, a conversation about maybe some customized training programs that we can try to put together. Brad mentioned, and the group mentioned the, the biotech bootcamp. Uh, these are ideas that can be uh, ported across different sectors and for different occupations. So uh, let us know what we can do to help in, in DE and I, I think are, are all important conversations right now. That's terrific. And we do have one more question from the audience. Um, Mr. Stewart, you have about a minute to answer it. I'll, re I'll read it as quickly as I can. Uh, the White Oak area has two larger retail operations which have will be closing. One was the ShopRite at Plum Orchard and the other is a standalone Sears at the White Oak Shopping Center. Sears is in the final days of its closing sale. What could MCEDC do to help these facilities to no longer be empty? Well, we, we work hard on that. Uh, we are constantly trying to attract businesses here. It's interesting that Sears is one that we've put in front of uh, several life sciences companies as a potential manufacturing facility. Um, so we're constantly, every time the discussion comes up, letting people know where space is available. Uh, you'll notice that Amazon has a couple of new projects here in the county to open grocery stores and other things. Uh, we, we have someone on our team named, named Spiro Baltus who actually works to manage all these real estate opportunities and let developers and site selectors know that they're available to them. Fantastic. I'm going to turn it back to Council Member Katz to take us out. Thank you very much to both of you. Well, and, and thank you both very, very much uh, for, for uh, giving your wisdom to us today. We appreciate it. I always like to say this is the fastest 30 minutes in history. When we have these discussions, it, it moves pretty rapid. But we thank you literally for everything you're doing every day for us. And we look forward to, to uh, uh, our continued success together. And we know that in, in this case, both of you need to work together so that we can get more and more people employed in the, in the best jobs they can possibly have. So with that, Susan, thank you very much for moderating. And I think uh, that mean, I believe this session is, unfortunately, has to come to an end. 
It does. But thank you both very much. And um, hopefully we will talk to you again very soon. Take care. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Take care.